The Lord be with you. I don't know, Fridays have a great feel to them, don't they? Chapel choir always gets us ready for celebrative and just um, made it through a good another week. And I don't know if it's from the sermon, which you'll hear a little bit this morning, maybe echoes of this, but just thankfulness for God bringing us together and letting us be here. And I am so thankful for you that you come to hear God's word, mask on, just joyful spirit, good, good sense of our community, of who we are. And so we get to celebrate that again today. And uh, boy, turning the calendar page to October 1st, looking at a brand new month of God's grace and mercy and only a couple weeks off of, of fall break. And so lots of great things that God's doing in our midst. We're just going to look at a couple verses of the psalm that is uh, assigned for this week. We had it earlier when we sang Matins, part of Psalm 104, but I'm just going to use two verses for our text. So we'll have the invocation and, and those verses of our, our text, and then the choir will sing. So just remain seated. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God's Word, Psalm 104, verses 27 and 28. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. This is the Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Dear mom and dad, 
Well, I know I said thanks when we talked, but I want to say thanks again for the package. I guess my hint of making sure that you knew the address here, which I knew that you knew, was obvious enough that I might love to get mail or a package, but it was great. Did you have those old Harry Potter stickers in a box somewhere, or do they still sell them? When I opened the box, they reminded me of how you used to put notes with stickers in my lunch in grade school. I don't know if I ever let you know how much I looked forward to those. I wouldn't allow myself to look at it until lunch, and it was mostly always the same kind of thing. Do good on your science test, we know you will. Or have a good day, we love you. Or we're proud of you. But they were always there. So mission accomplished on reminding me at lunch that you were thinking of me. So thanks for the food and the package. Too bad you couldn't send some Ted Drew's frozen custard or St. Louis style pizza with Provel cheese. I will totally have that when I come home for fall break. But the Fitz's soda was a super fun surprise, including a four pack of pumpkin pop was amazing. The few people who have seen it think it sounds weird and it doesn't help to explain that even though it's pumpkin flavored, it's more sweet than anything and it's delicious and you can only get it in the fall in St. Louis. And so it just makes it simpler to enjoy it in a quiet moment of solitude, which is well appreciated. I am savoring one of the cookies right now. Mom, your cookie decorating is totally impressive. People would probably pay at least $3 a piece for these cookies. The llamas decorated and the hedgehogs are the best thing I've, are the best thing I've ever seen. They're so cute. All is chronicled in the picture I posted with Bree and Jillian and me, each with a cookie as Bree bites the head off of a llama and Jillian pretends to be poked by a hedgehog. I had to be judicious in sharing them. A dozen fancy cookies with more than three people would go fast. So I couldn't really make the circle wider. 12 divided by three roommates would seem like four each, but I just gave them two each. Save the other ones for me. Yes, I know that is eight cookies for me. I had one right away and then a second one that same day, but I decided to have one each day, so they're lasting a week up through this weekend. Three left. One a day, I'm treating them like vitamins, part of my daily nutrition, which means I'm allowed to have one for breakfast if I want. You asked about the food. It's good. The extra O's in good mean good is different than good. I almost laughed when I thought of what grandma says sometimes about something that's fine, but not great. I would say meh. But she would say, well, it's nothing to write home about. But here I am writing home about food that is sometimes nothing to write home about, but sometimes just what I need or want. I guess it's easy to complain. There's always something that I can find. There's some good stuff. Chicken in a lot of different ways works. Quesadillas work. People fall into patterns of what we eat. I've had a routine of having a wrap every day for lunch and then a salad, or they have hummus and pita chips that I sometimes get. There's usually a little line to get a wrap, and then you're lingering and waiting by the desserts, which are honestly pretty good. I've seen guys polish off two desserts in the line before they get to the sandwich. Most days, there are cookies, but they're not llama or hedgehog cookies. They're not necessarily something to write home about, but here I am writing home about them. I think that a lot of people don't know that they have cookies after chapel on Friday. They have coffee every day and juice, but on Friday, if you just go inside the calf, there are cookies free for everyone to take, so there's that too. I was thinking about eating and meal habits and things on Wednesday when in the middle of dinner, a group of people did a prayer from camp. I guess they had been on a retreat last weekend and they got the Johnny Appleseed prayer stuck in their heads. One of those songs you sing at camp. 
I don't know if you know the Johnny Appleseed prayer. I guess it's been around a long time. It can't really be sung in a letter, I guess. But it goes, Oh, the Lord is good to me, and so I thank the Lord for giving me the things I need, the sun and the rain and the apple seed. The Lord is good to me. Amen, 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 amen. The clapping and the repetition, they always help. At least it wasn't the Jaws prayer. It's funny how it made me think of meal prayers. Kind of miss the meal prayers from home. It's just the regular come Lord Jesus be our guest that we always do. But when we're all there, we sat down together, which didn't always happen, it just seemed like it was very intentional. Eating together and seeing God in the midst of what was happening. Here, people come and go at tables in the calf. A lot of times a group of people kind of comes at the same time, but we're all getting drinks or salad bar or whatever, and we just kind of start individually. It's honestly a place where, more than most, where people respect your silent prayer before a meal. But it's not easy, easy to have it seem as intentional as when you all pray together. Like when we go to Uncle Ted and Aunt Beth's house for a meal and he always has to have three specific things to pray for in the prayer before a meal. And oftentimes the third is simply Will asking for whatever sports team is playing that day to win. But he keeps it as a routine or a tradition or whatever it should be called. Maybe it's like those notes you used to put in my lunch when I was in grade school to have words from someone who loves you as you realize that the food you have to eat is a gift from God, that the Lord is good to me, and Jesus is our guest. We had a couple of sermons in chapel this week that talked about food, kind of made me hungry. Pastor Doug talking about diets, and, and there was one about people eating manna in the wilderness. Our faith associate, I'll tell you more about her later, who always posts Bible verses in the hall, put one that is a psalm for this week. It says, These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. It's like you're literally like God is literally feeding us. I think of, I kind of vaguely know that verse. It's so simple, almost like a child's prayer. But it means that every good thing is from God. Friends and family and food and forgiveness. A sandwich and soda and scripture and a savior cookies and Concordia and chapel and Christ. I guess we could go on forever. And that's something to write home about. So that's all the news from Concordia where all the students are studious, all the professors are brilliant. Staff is always smiling and everyone is loved by God, whether they know it or not. Love, grace. We'll sing our hymn now, and note that the last stanza is a doxology, so we'll stand for stanza three, hymn number 803.